one, I haven't, I only have seen one correct answer, so. But I gave it only four points, you know. I said it is fixed. Yes, it's not pin. If, if, if the rod and the slider, notice in your handout, they are all pinned together. So you put one force. Here I said it is fixed, but it can slide. Is that correct or not? So now you can figure it out. There should be a moment there, in other words. Yeah, that's exactly what I was asking. Yes, if... Guys, right, let's, let's... Guys, if there is a slider, notice are all your slider, the one is in the book. If there is a rod and a slider, there is a pin here. This rod is pin, yes or no? If you have a slider here and this rod is being fixed here, you see the difference between the two, yes or no? Can this rotate about that point? This one can rotate, everybody see that? So that's the difference between this item, which is, this is a slider going on top of that, and then it's a pin and the rod is like that, you see that? This rod rotates, this rod doesn't. That's the only thing what I'm asking. Never mind that some people make the mistake on the other, other part too, but this was the main part. Okay? All right then, we'll discuss it when I get, that, when I get those back, but that's not the point, because this, many people missed it. Yeah, of course. No, you don't miss all four points. You get one, two, or three, or four. <laughs> It, I pur purposely only put four points to bring to your attention that the reaction is you should care, be careful what you are designing is that in future. Whatever you design, the reaction is based on the... If there is a freedom, nothing there. Is that correct or not? If there is, you are restricting emotion for whatever reason, you put a reaction there. So that was just... A, so now, going to the trusses, any question about the trusses? Are you okay with method of section? Yes. Could you write up the answers to number five? Just answer to number five. If I have it here, I will put it down there. So I hope that I have solution. I don't have my solution with me. So sorry for that. So I may put it on the blackboard. For number five? Yes. That's the only one? Whoa. So far. <laughs> so far. <laughs> so I, I, I take a check. I usually have my solution with me, but today I didn't bring it because you. Okay, number five. Anybody has done it correctly? Five? Did you get it, the answer in the back of, I mean, in the solution manual? <laughs> well, but that's the fact if you have the solution manual, because so you don't have it, you don't have it. That's okay. Anyhow, I will give it to you. That doesn't matter. So, are you okay with the method of section? Or one more example? Oh. What? You started it. Okay, but I, I, I told you how to do it. <laughs> that, that's, all, that's all we want, you know. Well, what else can you do? I said take the moment about here and there, and that was it. No, I'm kidding. So let's, <laughs> let's put another example down on the board. It takes more time drawing the example on the board, especially with a camera, but then to discuss the solution for that. So I'm going to do it anyway. So this is a typical... Trusses. So let's say put it. This is the long one. So here is, of course, as usual, pin, pin. So how many spines is that? One, two, three, four, and half and half. So here we go like this. Here we go like that. Then we divide into four part. So we go like this, and this one goes like that. That one goes like that. This one goes like that. And here is a roller at point L, and here is a pin at point A. All right, uh, the distances are as follows, so you can, uh, these are all again assumed to be all pin connection. You see there are subs. So, sub zero force member, you can see it here. This one is a zero force, if there is no force, then let's see whether we have any force there or not. So here we put here a force here, a force there, there at the joint, 
as usual, not on the member. So 1.2 kilonewton each. And the distances are one, two, to four meter each here, which makes it 16 meter and 2.25, 2.25 meter. As you see, it's very long, so if you have a very large auditorium or a sport arena, you want to put something like that on top of that. It is a, of course, if you want to do method of joint, it's lot, there are lots of member. You can notice now, for example, this member is a zero force member. This member is zero force, but that's beside the point. We don't want to discuss that, but that's one way of starting the solution. Of course, we have to, first step one always is to find a Reaction, is that correct? Uh, no. We have how many reactions do we have again as usual? At A we have AX and AY. At, uh, yeah, there are so many points we should call that. So let's let a few of them at least called A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I don't know which one. Uh, let's go to the, okay, just finish it. G, H, I, J, K. L. So therefore, there is a reaction at, two reaction at A, of course, AX equal to zero. We don't have any horizontal forces in this, uh, this truss. So method of joint will be very lengthy, and then we, if we make a mistake, we make a mistake, it will carry over to other solutions. So we have step one, finding the reaction here. Obviously, AX must be equal to Zero. Do I need to take the moment, or can you see what the reaction is at each point? I purposely mentioned this before for you not to do extra work, because this is symmetrical. Oh, so I didn't put here. Yeah, this is symmetrical with respect to the sizes. Is that correct or not? <coughs> if this was 225, this length was 125, would not have been a symmetrical scenario. The loading is symmetrical, so whatever you have at A should be exactly equal to what you have at L as far as the reaction is concerned, so that becomes half a load, is that correct? So 1.2, 1.2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's 6 kilonewton divided by 2 each side, it has 3 kilonewton because of being symmetrical scenario. And of course, in this scenario, as I said it before, you only <coughs> solve half of the problem. You don't have to solve the other side because the other side will be symmetrical. In this method, we are going to use method of section. The key element is not to cut the truss more than three members. So it depends which three member you want to consider. Sometimes in the homework co or quizzes, I will tell you what to do. In general, if it is your own decision, you can cut it here if you want. That's three member cut, is that correct? Or here, or here, everybody see what I've said. Let's say that the question is to find the forces in this member DF, DG, and EG. Is that correct or not? As I said it before, all you have to do is cutting in two half, then you can consider either the left hand side or the, doesn't make any difference because the forces in these three member are equal at Opposite. Everybody understand what I'm saying? That correct? Therefore, you have to cut it, then redraw it. You have to. But for me, it is easy because I can erase the rest of it. Is that correct or not? So, if I want to look at the free body diagram of left hand side, I all after I find the reaction. Step one. This is step two. I'm not using method of joint. I'm using method of section. I divide that into two. I cut only three member. So I have to look at the free body diagram. I had both choices, either left or right. So I look to see which one is simpler. This one has less members, so I go this one. Is that correct or not? And then I have to put forces in those three members. So the forces on those three members, as usual, we have to put it in tension mode. That's another key. Tension mode is what? 
going away from the joint. It has nothing to do with the static plus and minus. Notice this one is going in that direction, this one is going in that direction, this one is going in that direction. Is that correct? Or and those forces are F, E, G, forces F. I don't need to draw that anymore, so I could put it there or here. doesn't make any difference. This one is F. Let's do it like that. This is F, D, G. And this one is F, D, F, D, F. All put in. Tension mode. Okay. Now the next step is to finding this ridge. This I leave it up to you. There is many way of do it. Of course, last time uh, one of you said immediately you have to take the moment about point D. Of course, we have to watch about D. But and I did not give you the height here. The height here is given equal to three meter as well. So as you see in this direction, if I want the, this direction, this is three height and four run. Is that correct or not? So immediately this one has a four run and three rise, four meter and three meter. This two, of course, is horizontal. So there you have many options here. One option is to take the moment about point D. So you write sigma MD as sigma M at or about D or at point D equal to zero. And as you see, there is nothing there to worry about. This force and this force and this force have no moment. F E G times three. F E G times three. Of course, it will be in kilonewton meter. We put the unit in front. And that is plus, it's going that way. This one and this one. This one has no moment. This one has a moment of plus 1.2 times 4 meter is going also plus. So this is plus, this is plus. This one is negative, minus 3 kilonewton times 6.25 equal to 0. You immediately get F. E C E G equal to F E G become by calculating that one become plus four point six five kilonewton and therefore since it came plus it means the tension that I have chosen is correct. Yes. So we eliminated A X from the symmetry, correct? A X was zero. Because no, not because of cement, actually, because there was no horizontal load. If there was a horizontal load, it would not be symmetrical. Did you get the answer? Actually, that's a very good question. Sometimes people make a mistake there. Let me elaborate in that one. When there is a horizontal load there, the system will not be symmetrical. Although, look, this is, I, I have seen this mistake. I'm glad you asked that question. Let's go to any structure, not that one. Let's say you have a structure like that. Everything is symmetrical. Is that correct or not? Similar to that. Let's say you have a load here and a load there. Is that correct or not? Right now, if all the dimensions like that are symmetrical, this reaction and that reaction vertically is going to be equal. Yes or no? But as soon as I put, either everything is, is symmetrical. If for some reason I put a force here, horizontal, is this symmetrical? No, because the reaction here now, because this pushes this way, the reaction here is larger, even the vertical reaction. The reaction here is smaller because this force is creating a moment that way. Is that correct? And the, the system wants to react to that. Therefore, so this is no longer, that's it. the reason that this was reaction actually exactly because I could have AX and LX equal and that again become symmetrical. Everybody understands. But if I only put one load on one side, that's not the same. Right. Anyhow, is that understood, the question and the answer? OK, all right. Anyhow, so this is very simple scenario. And therefore, we go from there. So the rest of it is using sigma fx and <coughs> sigma fy. Everybody see it's very simple to calculate that. So you can use, for example, sigma fy first, because this one doesn't have any y component. Is that correct or not? Sigma of y equal to, so let's finish the problem, equal to 0. 
Here you have three kilonewton going up, minus 1.2, minus 1.2, this is minus, minus, plus, and this one is minus three-fifth of FDG, FDG equal to zero, and FDG become equal to You become one kilonewton. Means that is also in tension. Okay? Yes? The next is writing sigma fx equal to zero and finding the last force. The last force will be FDF. So when you do that, sigma fx equal to sigma fx equal to zero. Notice. We have nothing there except starting from top is FDF plus four fifth of plus four fifth of FDG, but FDG is one. And then we have FEG, FEG is plus four point six five equal to zero. FDF end up to be equal to minus 5.45 kilonewton. Obviously, this one is in compression. compression. Just ask you a question. What do you think happened to the other, this, all, all this member on top and all the member on the bottom? Can you guess it? I want to see whether, when you come to the strength of material, you have some idea there. Can you guess? The top one ends up to be in compression. The bottom one ends up to be in tension. Is it performing like that? Is it the deformation of thrust because of the load there? Look at this side. It's as if it's getting crushed. Everybody on this side getting. So you, ahead of time, you have some idea what's going to happen. Is that correct? And of course, when you do more of this, then you learn it. Everybody understands. It's not necessary at this time for a static student to know all about this. But later on, in strength of material classes and then advanced classes, you are going to design every piece of this, this uh, truss, for example. Members are two force member. That's week one to three in ME218. We are designing the all the members and all the joint. We are designing the pin, the pin, there are maybe shear stresses there, normal stresses there, we design the size of that. We have to tell you all about the strength of material, what material to use, why, etc., etc. Everybody understand to come up with reasonable sizes, with a reasonable factor of safety. These are all future courses. But notice that I have to find the forces first to design something. Every, and that's why static becomes so important. Static is the corner store of every problem. You, any problem in ME218 practically start with static first. Every object has to be first. For, you have to find the forces to design that object for those forces and moment. Everybody understand what I'm saying? That if you don't know what moment is that in that hinge, if there is any, how do you design that object to resist that moment or to resist that force? That comes later on, but the issue remains the same. Many of you have come to the office hour. You saw that all the students in ME18, most of their questions, not all of them, actually 50% of their, their question is all about the static and they have some sort of problem. For example, this morning we were talking about eccentric loading, how the eccentric loading behaves differ in the structure, how do we take that into account. It's all about moment, about the x-axis and y-axis and z-axis, etc., etc. Of course, some can do it very easily. Some have a little bit of problem, etc., etc. Anyhow, that's the end of the trusses. We want to go to the frame. Any more question there? Is there any question? Did you see? No. So in the books, you can other alternative is available. Rather than using sigma fx, you may want to extend these two lines to get to the, this point because these two lines going to intersect there. Yes or no? Then take the moment about this point. Everybody understand that. Because then this force and this force will be having no moment at that point. If that's the one I guess they are using in the solution manual or in the book example. Is that correct or not? So you have that up. But it is so simple, you don't have to worry about it. Yes? Okay.
Now frames. Now let's, let me explain what the frames are. These are frames, but they are not actual frames. So because, because I always have a little, I have to explain that a little bit to you to tell you what are these. Are, I call it special frame. In the book, usually they call it frame. They are frame. So what are they? they write it down, definition again, the goal and the solution. If we can write that in three paragraphs so we can go forward with the example. Now the frame of our structure with several members, please write it down. Frames are a structure with several members. Some of the members are pin connected. That's why I call them a special frame. Some of the members are pin connected, not all. You don't have to write the rest of my discussion. If they are not pin connected, all the members are fixed, bolted together or welded together, that become a regular frame, frame of the, every building that you see, large building, either a steel frame or concrete frame. That is very complex problem. As I said, it has many, many unknown and you cannot touch it until two, three years down the road, near senior year or even graduate work to be able to to find out how do we design this, this frame. Of course, civil engineer, they, they give you in the third year or fourth year, they give you a program and the, you put everything in the program, the program solve it for you. That doesn't mean that you are solving it, but however, you get the answer that you want. Everybody understand it. Writing a program or know, knowing how to set up that structure and solve all the unknown is an issue that you learn it if you are interested to go to the graduate work, that's, that road you can take to find out how that's been done. You need to take a few math courses, you need to take a few engineering courses to be able to set it up as a metrics and then metrics you have to solve the N equation and N unknown in general. But again, you do it by the help of computer. So you have to be able to use the computer to write the program, to read the program, change the program and basically do that. There are lots of methods available for civil and mechanical engineering, lots of programs that previously engineer like you went into that field and start doing that from where the day, day that the first time the computer came out and then become more advanced, more advanced. There are programs here, the department has it. They, they put it in, in your use, you just put the data in, you get the answer as usual, but somehow somebody has written that program. Everybody understands that. So that is the idea of the frame. Now this frame, what did you write down? This frame is a special frame, has several members, are pin connected, yes or no? Now what's the goal of this objective? What's the goal of that? We want to find out the forces acting, write it down. The goal is to find the forces acting at the, at the end of each member. The goal is to find the forces at the end of each member. So that's the goal, which is a little bit different than trusses. Because trusses are our two force mm -hmm. member. Fra frame are not two force members. They may or may not have two force members in it. Everybody understand that. In general, they are not. Therefore, the member can bend, twist, etc. And you don't care about that. You are now looking only at static part of it. So the solution. Solution. To reach to that goal, you need a solution. Solution. Step one is the same as before. Step one is consider the free body diagram of entire frame. Consider the free body diagram of entire frame. Are you writing it down? Solution. Consider the free body diagram of entire frame. Use equilibrium of rigid body. Chapter, previous chapter. Use equilibrium of rigid body to find the reactions. In parentheses, if possible, because sometimes it's possible, sometimes it's not, especially about the, the frame. So far, in all the trusses that I gave you, finding this reaction was possible. In frame, some of them are possible, some of them are not. But don't worry about it. We still will be able to solve it. Step two, which is the most crucial point. Step two, separate all the members at the joints with the pin. pin. Separate all the members at the joints 
or at the pin joint, that's better, right? At the pin joint. And consider free body diagram of each and every member. Consider free body diagram of each and every member. Okay. This was only three paragraphs. One was definition of the frame. The frame, the special frame. Frame are, <coughs> have several members like trusses. Some of them are pin connected, not all. If all were pin connected and the load were at the joint, then that would have been the truss. If I draw something like that, now this is for the purpose of discussion, you want to write it down. So if I draw here, a member like that, here is fixed. Here is a rod going like this. And here is a roller. <coughs> and I believe I want to show you that. Okay, so we go there. And let's say that I have here put a pin here. And here I put 500 pound load there. And put I put here 500 pound load there. And let's say that we have distances given to you, five feet and three feet, and the vertical distance is given four feet. And let's say that this 500, 500 pound is right at the middle of this member. Height is two and two. Now, is this a frame or is it a truss? You have to recognize from now. Is it a truss or is it a frame? Obviously, the discussion is the frame. It must be frame. Yes or no? That's no, no frame. Why? Why does not qualify for a truss? What was the... That I want to remind yourself. I want you to remind yourself of the definition of the truss. What is there that does not qualify this structure as a truss? Well, then... There's a force acting. There are the force at the middle of the member. That was one of the conditions. Second, all the members should be. See, this is just the purpose of discussion, what you have written down. You see, really, it's a very simple frame. Everybody, with your frame is not going to be that simple. Is that correct or not? But I purposely violated the two conditions. One, the force is on the member, it's not on the joint. This one is on the joint, this one is on the member. And all the members should be. Pin connected, that one is fixed to the wall. Is that, so that is not qualified for the. No. Now, if I want to calculate, let's put ABC. Now, look what happened. Actually, this is exactly what I said before. Let's put here A, B, and let's see what I put here. This is the C. The C. What are step one? Step one is finding the reaction if possible. So let's see whether it is possible or not. So again, we have to erase or disconnect the structure from all its connection. Remember that. A, C. The connection of God. Now, at here I had a roller. So what should I put there? Now, by now, everybody knows at least about that part because I noticed you did it all. A roller would be one force going up because you are preventing this from going up and down. Okay. So you have here C1. Okay, what should I put at A? This was a fixed support. It's not going this way. So I need to have AX. It's not going that way. I have to put A, A1. And then what? Because it is like this. Remember, it's fixed. Remember, the fixed versus pin. It's a big difference between the two. Everybody see that? Yes, fixed versus pin. Therefore, there I should have also A. M A. How many on do I have? Not four, three. Four. Four. How many equations do I have? Three. Three. I can write away C A X equal to zero again. Everybody understand. But that's one equation. Sigma F X equal to zero. A X equal to zero. Actually, that was your quiz. Some of you didn't write it down. You put the A there, but since sigma F X must be equal to zero, A X must be equal to Zero. Your quiz was like that too. Is that correct or not? But you have to write it down. You have to, because I don't know. I may put here a horizontal force there. Everybody understands it. If there was a horizontal force here at B, I uh, would have an AX there. Is that correct or not? However, this is a frame, of course. Step one, sigma Fx equal to zero. 
AX equal to zero. Well, how many equations left? Two equations left. How many unknown do I have? One, two, and three. three. So it's still not solvable. I can write AY plus CY equal to 1,000. Everybody understand that? And then I can take the moment about here or there or there, doesn't make it. But this M A comes to the picture, CY comes to the picture, AY comes to the picture. No matter what I do, it is math. I have only two equations. Remember, you, what thing you cannot do, take the moment about A and take the moment about C and then take the moment about B and make a mistake somewhere. <coughs> then you come up with two, three independent equations, then you solve it. Is that correct or not? Yes? And it, happ it happened in ME 218 too, I believe it. I give them an indeterminate problem. We call this indeterminate frame. But by a static, you are able to solve it. That's a different. However, this has one special scenario. If this was fixed like that, you could never do it with a static at all. Everybody understands. But this, we call it a special frame. Why? Because there is a mm -hmm. pin there. So, okay. so because of that pin there, actually by doing that, we have changed it without you realizing from an indeterminate problem to a determinate problem by doing a step two. Now, what's the step two? What did you write that? See, step one, we're already following that. It's, then we can continue with doing that. So you can, but does it, does it get us anywhere? The next equation you want to write, please write it down just to finish it. So you write sigma fy equal to zero. That means ay plus uh, cy, I'm sorry, plus cy must be equal to 1,000 pounds. Is that correct or not? Yes? What's the next equation? The next equation, where do you want to take the moment about? A, okay, so you write sigma m, this is not good anymore, so let's get a better one. Sigma m at point A equal to zero. Is that what you are? So remember what I'm writing, how I'm writing it. Now don't forget m a. This is another second time or third time. Some people write it, instead of writing like that, they write it like that. First of all, some of you even don't put summation there, which is the worst scenario. Some people write sig M A equal to. You no, know, you're laughing because you know what I. If you wrote M A equal to zero, that means this M A must be equal to yeah. zero. Many times I told you not to do that. Summation of the moment at point A exactly that's what you have to do. Is that correct or not? Yes. That is nothing to do with the M A still sitting the same. Is that this is exactly as saying summation of the moment about point C equal to. Zero M A comes into the, your equation. Is that correct for us? Therefore, starting from left, A X doesn't have any moment about A. A Y doesn't have it, but you already have a moment sitting there. Is that correct? Uh, that's you draw it positive, so that is M A. Then you come here, you write 500 times what? Time 500 times five. five minus 500 times five. Then you write minus 500 times what? Minus 500 times, this is at the middle, so it's become one and a half, then five, six and half. And then if you leave it at that, of course you can solve for MA, but that's not true. That it, it, you have CY times, that's right, plus CY times eight equal. As you see, still you have here equation, this is one. Well, this is equation two, this is equation three. Any other version of it is the same thing, but still you have one, two, and three, three unknown there, everybody. Else. Now, you, by mistake, you don't incorporate that into your system. Forget about MA, of course, this becomes determinate, everybody else. As if this is not a fixable, that's a fixable. Is that correct? Now, what's the step two? What did I ask you to do? So let's do exactly like that. Let's see, this is just for the definition of what you wrote there in order to understand what you have written down. Step two is separate this from, separate all the members from each other at the joint. Is that at the joint which has a pin? We have only one pin, so it's very simple. So we have now two pin, one like that with a fixed support here. Is that correct or not? Yes, let's leave it at that, correct? And we have another member like this with the force right at the middle, 500 pounds. And here, I have, I cannot find that, so I have to put my reaction there. This is my unknown reaction. Oops, sorry. It, it, that should be upward. C 
That was C port. So this is B, this is C, this is A, this is B. Okay. I separate it, correct? So what else should I do? First of all, here at A, I know it's A, X, A, Y, and M. Well, I'm not worried about that. Let's go to B. Now, what should I put at B there? What was it there? What is it? Why separated? What did I cut? Forget about the 500 pounds first. What did I cut? It was a pin. What is, a, what is action on the pin? A, X, and A, Y, or B. Two forces, horizontally and vertically. So if I decided to put here, because this was a pin. In the pin, I should put here B, X, and B, Y. I'm just putting it this purposely because I'll show you it doesn't make any difference which way you put. Is that correct or not? Then, on the other side, I have to put equal and, but we know that from the Newton third law. Remember, when you cut it, your forces will be equal and opposite. So you commit to one, you can commit to this one, B, X, and this one. The other one become equal and now I have committed to this B, so the other B, I have no choice that to put it B, X, and B, Y. Be careful about that. This is going to happen in all the frame. Is that because this is the static. This is something we learned in the past. Is that correct? When you cut a member, many times I said the forces in that member are upward or downward, equal or opposite, if we have only force. The moment is the same thing. What is left there that I didn't put there? This one, yes or no? Yeah. Question. This is a question that comes out in some of your friends. Where should I put it? Both. In both? Okay. Don't write it down. Okay. These are, these are, this is exactly what you are supposed to do with your homework. I put here a 500 here downward and a 500 here. Yes or no? Now let's reassemble this. If I reassemble this, I should get that. Is that correct or not? Reassembling this BX and BY going to? Cancel each other, because when I connect these two together, BY and BY, then I have 500 here, 500 there, it becomes, how much do we have there? So that is wrong decision, yes or no? So what should I do? Half and half? That's too much work. <laughs> Why not putting it in one, not the other one? No, what I'm telling you is this, you really don't know that, and believe me, it does not make any difference. And if you have two items like this, actually I can do it here. You see here, this is two items like that, pinned together. Actually, oh. oops, <laughs> you cannot even see me where I put my hand. This is my load. Is it in this member, in this member, or at the middle? Does not make any difference? Should it make any difference? I'm pushing this point down. Would it make any difference if my finger is here or here or at the middle? You are saying put at the middle half and half. I'm saying put it either here or there. Both is the same thing. Don't worry about it. The only thing changes is the value of B, Y. Everybody, C, Y, and the other one will not have any effect. Try that at home if you don't believe me. So put it in the, on the one or the other one. Is that correct or not? So I don't know which one I put. Where did I put it? I put it on, the, on this pin. So I put here 500 pounds. Here. So please, did you write it down? When there are the forces that joint and you are dividing that joint into two, you can put that force e on either member. I have given this type of question in the final, remember that. Either member, so does not make any difference. All it changes is the value of PY, which you don't care. Everybody <coughs> understand that, yes? Okay, now, how many unknown do you have? Look, this is very interesting to look at this scenario now. How many unknown do I have? Now, I have increased. Here, I had four, yes or no? Yeah. Now, two more added, correct? How many unknown do we have in general? I mean, total, six. six. How many equations can I write for this? How many equations can I write for that? Three and three is? Six, I should be able to solve it. Everybody see it happen? Because there was a pin there. Now, if there was not a pin there, I could not do that because I would have a moment here. Everybody under, and that moment kills it again. Everybody under. This is why I call it a special frame. This is a special frame, I can do it at the pin. Is that correct or not? Now, you see, it's very simple. What do you think the value of CY, if I take the moment here, what the value of CY, did you see how much static have you learned? What do you think the value of CY should be here? If this, is, this distance is half of this distance. 250, is that, do you accept that? Yeah. 
Do you see it or not? 500 times A, CY times 2A. So what's the value of CY? 250, correct? Come on, guys. You know that much. So take the ball. In this one, write it down. In member, BC, take the moment at point B equal to zero. Now remember what we had here. This distance is three. You said it before, one and a half and one and a half. Isn't that what when I do it here, you said six and a half there, yes or no, correct? So this is what's simple. These two have no moments, so 500 times one and a half going negative plus CY times three going positive equal to zero. As you see, this is the ratio of two, one to do. That's what I asked you to do it in your head. So obviously CY must be equal to 500 divided by two, so therefore it will be 250 pounds going up. What's the value of BY now? BY will be 250 not going down. It should be going up, very good. Sigma Fy tells me, so we are doing it by inspection because it's so simple. Sigma Fy equal to zero gives me By equal to minus 250 pounds or going up. What's the value of Bx? The value of Bx is equal to? Zero. zero. There is no other horizontal force. Is that correct or not? Yes? Sigma Fx, we are going backward. Moment, sigma Y, and then sigma X. Because that's the way it looks like. Is that correct or not? Yes? Sigma Fx equal to zero, Bx equal to zero. So that one disappeared, so that one I don't need to put it there. In this problem it becomes like that. This one, this is the answer. So this one is gone, and this one becomes 250. This is 250 up. This must be 250 down. down. Everybody under. Or the value of that one. So please write it down. The value of that one is minus. This is the best because you already committed to that. So you don't want to go and change it. This happened in your trusses as well. The value of that one is minus 250. Is that correct or not? Bx is equal to zero. So the two Bs are equal to zero because if this B equal to zero, that Bx must be also equal to yeah. zero. So this was just for demonstration of what I told you. So end up only with uh, 750 pounds there, everybody understand. Well, if you put it 500 here, the value of BY will be changing, the same thing. The value of BY here becomes 750, there will become 750, that's the same thing. So it doesn't matter where you put it. Now, is this very difficult to solve? Of course it's not, yes or no? AX must be equal to? Zero. AY must be equal to? 750. The moment of here would be which way? Now, let's be careful. If this is? Five feet, is that correct or not? The moment here at this support, it should be going that way or should be going that way? Well, be careful what you are answering. You see, that two things here, exactly the same mistake that I saw this morning in Amy 219, that you are considered the action. I'm not looking for the action, I'm looking for the reaction. reaction. Action plus reaction must be equal to zero. zero. So. You can do it by inspection if you want. However, if this action going that way, notice I put another moment going this one as reaction, these two are going in the same, same direction. It cannot be equal to zero. Is that correct or not? Be careful about that. When you write some of, some of the moment equal to zero, it would eventually end up in the other direction, every, everywhere. Opposite to action. So in other words, action plus reaction must be equal to zero. Because this is such a simple case, I'm doing it this way. So this is the answer, final answer, 750. And this becomes 750 times, time becomes 3,750 pounds foot of moment. And this is pounds, so this is a cantilever beam. That's a, so as you see, a problem was solved. Notice two, three things. A step one was not Complete. I could not finish step one because it's, I could not find a reaction. I had too many reactions, everybody. However, this was a special frame. Why a special frame? I had pin. I do it like that, then I got it. Now, now that we did that, let's go to your example in your handout, which is much more sophisticated. So go to problem number one. There are several examples in your handout. 
Everybody has a copy. I had a few copy there here. So let's do the one that is more sophisticated than this. And it has a pulley. And I promise some of you to take care of the pulley as well. So as you see, everything that you wrote in those three paragraphs applied here. Is that correct or not? Everything that you wrote now should have a meaning for you. So. No, the only thing now we have to be careful about in each frame or each machine is to be not to making any mistake or not to make any unreasonable assumption and then you should be okay. So let's look at the picture itself. So I have to draw one more time the frame here on the board for you guys. Of course, you have it in your handout. You don't have to redraw this. I have to do it that for everybody to see that. So where is my handout? Can I get a copy of your, your handout? Yeah, I, I believe I have one here. Don't worry. I have one left. OK, we are done with the first page. And now we are on the second page. We are on the third page. So there are a few, five, six, seven frames here. Everybody see that? So I'm going to do this one. We cannot do this one. This was the final question. So you can do that because we don't know about this con uh, uniform load or linear load here. I talk about this later on. Let's do this problem on the right hand side, which has been a previous quest. Is that correct or not? Everybody with me? Yes? Okay. So now let's draw that frame and see what we have there. So this frame actually you will see. The frame become if you do it in a proper format, so the frame become really very simple to solve it. So here we go. Well, this pens are I'm losing this so quickly. So here we go. There is a vertical member there and A, B, C, and D here. And there is another horizontal member going here. It's pin connected here. A pin connected here like this. Pin connected. These two together. Pin, pin. And here is also pin connected to the floor. So this is a pin connection there. And there is a pulley here. And there is a weight hanging from here. Let's say put the weight of the, I have not given it the picture there, but let's put the weight equal to 40 pounds, 40 pounds. 40 pounds, a bucket here with 40 pounds weight. And that rope also goes to, how do you, okay. Goes something like that, goes, this should be a little bit bigger, but let's put it there so much. Pulley goes like that, the rope goes like this over there. <coughs> Just this, this is not in the scale. No. What I have given you is this. This three dimension is given, each one equal to six inches. Six inches, six inches, six inches. This is the pin, every member is pin. That there is a of course, you see that in the back, or you don't see this one, or down here. You see this one in front, but you don't see this long dash line here. There. Either in front of it or in the back of it, doesn't matter. It is in front or the back. They put it in front. So you see this, okay. You don't see that, okay. That's fine. So that goes there. And the, this radius is given equal to three inches. And then we call this one A, B, C, D. E and G. This is your frame. How many members are there? Let's decide on that one. First thing, first. How many members is there? So I don't want anybody to make any mistake that between this frame and the truss member, because there is a big difference between the two. How many members do you see here? Four. Four? Which are four? This is the member B, E, yes or no? Correct. There is a member C, E, and E, G. Is that what you said or not? No. No. Very good. This is actually not two member. This is one, one member. I want you to understand what's the difference between a truss member and a frame. In trusses, if I have a point like E, this member, and that member, and this member, all three of them are going to be pinned together because all the members should be pin connected. Here, hold on. 
Here, I will answer your question. Here, this is what we are seeing. I want you to see what's the difference. Here, there is a solid member. There is a pin here, and this one is being pinned on top of the other one. So in other words, this is a member, and this is a member. So with that in mind, there is a member C, E, G, yes or no? What about this one? Notice, this is one piece, is that correct? These two are attached on top of that. So we have member A, B, C, D. I have member C, E, G. I have member B, E, is that correct? And also you can consider the pulley as the fourth member. Pulley is also a member, but it's not a straight line, it is a member. Is that correct? So it is four member. What was your question? Are we disregarding the role that D? What? Are we disregarding the roller at D? At E? D. D? Is there a roller at D? Oh, no, I don't. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I cannot do disregard. You have to look at the picture, and there was a roller here as well. That's right. We get to that part, because I was so anxious to explain <coughs> the rod to you, so that's right. So how many, how many unknown Reaction do I have? We want to go step one. How many unknown reactions do we have there? Is it solvable or not? Remember what you wrote there in previous example, it was not solvable. There is that. In this one, is this, can you solve the reaction or not? Don't forget that. Do that always first because it makes it much simpler later on. The step two become very simple. How many reactions do you have at A? Two. two. How many reactions do you have at D? One. one. How many reactions is total? Actually, without D, this would be moving. Is that correct or not? <laughs> so therefore, so can we solve it? So let's put that. Again, I'm going to erase that as usual and put here for you AX. If you don't ha have time to do it, you can put it, you have to draw this without the D or uh, this was point D. And I'm going to put here D going that way, although it may be wrong because AX and D cannot be on the same direction. Is that correct or not? Yes? One of them has to change. So call it dx because there is no dy because that's what they wrote there. How many unknown do we have? Three, so I should be able to solve it. Is that correct or In this is not like the other one. Many times you can do it, many, sometimes you can't. The other one was we couldn't, but we went to step two. That's what the point is. Here, always do a step one. So step one, as if it was previous homework. So you take the moment sigma m at or about point, a equal to zero, very good. So you have dx time what? dx time 18 plus or minus. dx time 18 is going to be negative. Then we have 40 times what? Oh, I think put you this, this dimension here. So I know I'll put something missing. This dimension also I should be giving it to you. Those dimension is? Okay. I have it here. No, I just want to be sure. Those are given at six or eight and eight. Okay. Eight and eight. Right. Now, then I have. I don't have to break this apart. I have only forty part. Notice this. This <coughs> rope is not being cut, so you don't need to put one force here, one force there. Everybody, I read you put it. You do extra work for nothing. The forces are equal and. Opposite, you had that. Then we have 40 times what? 40 times? Be careful. When that, this was a quiz, some people made mistake. It's not 18. It is? It's, uh, it's not 16. It is 16 plus 3. It is 19. So that's right. 19. And it is negative as well, equal to 0. So dx or d ends up to be equal to, if we are going to finish it. Shortly, you see this is very low. minus 42.2 pound, so it means the direction that I have chosen is incorrect. Then we go to sigma fx, sigma fx equal to zero. I don't have to write that, everybody knows. Sigma f equal to zero gives me ax equal to 42.2 pound, and ay, I don't have even to solve it. Ay must be equal to 40. This is so simple. So ay must be equal to 40 pound. This is correct direction, 42.2 pounds. And this one has the value of equal to minus 42.2 pounds. Everybody, so it means going that direction. So step one is done, finished. Is that correct? Now we go to a step 
true. The idea is to find the forces acting at here, B, because these two are done already. Everybody understand that. A and D are done. We are forces acting at point C, B, E, G on every member. Is that correct? Which forces are equal and opposite. Now, what all we have to do, draw each member separately. So please draw that in any scale you want. Now, at D, I know what I have. At D, I have a force of 42.2 pounds here. I suggest for you, to, in order not to make any mistake, always put your point there and put each point there. Every point that you see, put it there in order not to make any mistake. This is one third, one third. So this is point A, this is point B, this is point C, that's point D. And there is a cable there. Everybody understand that, yes or no? Because when I separate this member, now look what we have done in the past. When I separate this member from all its connection, look what has been connected. A support was disconnected, so I put these forces there. Yes or no? I should put. Did I put it there yet or not? So let's put AX and AY. AX was equal to 42.2 pounds, and AY is equal to 40 pounds. So we have A disconnected. I put the appropriate forces there. Here, D is disconnected, I put appropriate forces there. Now I have here a tension cut. Some people forget about that. Is that tension? What's the tension in, what's the tension in that cable? If there is no friction, that one is 40 pounds. That's correct. So that's 40 pounds. And then we come to the C and to come to the B. At C, I have no choice to put here CX and CY. Okay, I put here CX and C1. Now, in order not to make a mistake, I would suggest that you try to do your frame as much as you can, similar to the picture that it is there. So if this is the C, this must be the C on the other member. Is that correct? So the other member is C, E, G, and the G, there is a pulley. I purposely didn't put the pulley there. You can put it there if you wish. Or you can separate it. I'm going to separate that because it's easier. I tell you the minute why. And I'm drawing the pulley separately here. This is the pulley. 40, 40. Is that correct or not? Because when I cut the pulley, I have here one cable here, one cable there. There is a G there. Is that correct or not? So the center of the, this is G. And this is also G, so now we can, as I said, it's four members. And then there is a member here between B to E. <coughs> yes or no? Okay, what should I put? So at C, we decided to have CX, CY. On the other side, I should put CX, CY equal and opposite. Please do not forget that. This is CX and that is CY. What should I put at, on the member at B? Dx and by? No. no. This is a two force? Okay. No. If you put b and x, b, it's still is solvable, but you have to go through twice as much math. You are ad advisable over to look for a two force? Mm -hmm. Member first. B, E is a two force? Mm -hmm. Member. It could be pure tension or pure compression. What do you think? Is it pure tension or pure compression? What do you think? Compression. Compression. Compression, very good. So if you are pulling this down, this is going to be compressed. Is that correct? correct. So, that, however, if you are not too sure, assume it is a, in, in under tension. tension because that's the rule. Is that correct? I don't know what I have chosen here. I assume this is absolutely under compression, so I can assume it under compression. Everybody under because I already know that. So your assumption was correct. So here is. Under compression, yes or no? You are crushing it, you are pushing it. Is that correct or not? So what should I put at B? Not notice, if this is force B, the force B must be equal to force E equal and opposite. So what should I put here? A force equal and opposite, which is going like that. And I put here equal and opposite, but like that. But what's the slope of that? No, slope of that given there. The slope of it is four. Run and three rise, is that correct? Eight, six, which is the same, just for simplicity. So that's it. Notice what happened here. 
This one I don't need because this one you really don't need it. I can erase it because B is there. This is B and that equal to E. And this member is become irrelevant. So although you show it there for you to see what happened there, especially if it is quiz or the homework, but notice that I don't care about that as long as I find the force B or force C, which had the wrong, uh, yes or no? Now, as you look at it, how many unknown do you have here? Actually, this problem becomes very simple. Look how many unknown you have here. Can you solve it? Yes. Yeah. Now, go to here, how many unknown you have here? You have more than three unknown. Let's see what happened there. Now, what happened here, you, there is two options. Write it down. Option one, you can keep this. I'm giving you, I'm, because I want to erase it. Uh, you can keep the pulley here with a force here, 40, and put a force 40, and solve it like that. Is that correct or not? Yes? This is solvable. How many unknown do you have? Three. <coughs> I that did not separate the G from each other. Everybody see that. But it is still solvable. Don't, don't forget. All you have to do, take the moment about point C. And this is the slope of that is given. I'm going to do it in a four minute. Four, four, three. Is that correct or not? And then the only unknown is that one because that's 40 and that's 40. But for the future, because there is a technique here that I want you to learn it, I rather you separate these two from each other. Is that correct or not? Yes? the way I had it originally. Because sometimes these forces are not going in this vertical and horizontal. Is that correct or not? Now we go to here. Is this in equilibrium the way I have drawn it? No. Of course not, because I have not put anything at G. Is that correct? At G I have to put what? G1. Gx, no, both Gx and? G1. Gx and G1. What's the value of G1? Look at it. 40. What's the value of gx? What should I put on this g? Equal, no, equal, gx and gr equal and opposite. opposite. So what happened there? This become equal to, this is 40 you said, yes or no? Going to the right, I should put here 40 going to the right. left. And this one is going up, I should put 40 on the down. So notice these two action without looking at G has transferred to this one. Is that correct or not? So that's what you should do. From now on, whatever you have a tension there, all the pulley, transfer it to the, to the pin on the other rod, you are done. You don't have to worry about it. Now, for this one, it was very simple. Both cases was very simple. Notice again, one more time. This is 40 going to the right because of that. Yes or no? This is 40 going up because of that. Here, I put 40 going to the left, 40 going down, which is exactly the action of these two tension. Everybody, else. but instead of being outside, it is on the <coughs> now. This problem does not make any difference. However, in future, you will see this. Please write it down in your note. You see here a pulley, and let's say that somebody asked me actually in this class before, or in one of your homework, there is a tension here. Let's say the tension is going like that. Tension is going at the angle of 30 degrees. Some student, I don't know, it was in this class or in the other class, I asked, asked me how do I calculate that point? Or how do, where is that point? Is that, I said you have to go with this angle, etc. So I think it was in the other class. Is that correct or not? Yes? Yeah. Notice, as long as this pulley is frictionless, this tension must be equal to that tension. Yes or no? But I don't care about all of this. All I do this is, so I put it here. I put here a tension going down and a tension going at what degree? At? 30 degrees. See, I transfer this action right to the center. I don't worry about GX and GY. This technique helps you to set up your, all the pulley when they are in there. As long as, of course, as long as they are friction. Because when we go to chapter eight, many pulleys have the friction. So they, there are some changes there. Everybody, the T will not be equal because of the friction. Is that correct or not? So, is that, so this has become a technique that you should put it aside, put it in a note, put this in a box. So in this case, this is down, this is left, so I put here down and left. If this was going, the cable was going at 50, 60 degrees, I'll put it right there. Is that correct? Which is much simpler, that's what I said. No one. However, this, doing this, this is my two free body diagram. The, the other two disappeared. Is that correct or not? Yet? Can, is, are they solvable? Of course they are. Look at this one. For this one, take the moment about sigma m. 
at or about point C equal to zero. Of course, you write in your note, you write this. This is the free body diagram of member C, E, G, because otherwise I would get lost in your writing because you are writing this equation for this member, for that member, so you should put it under the member or separate the member, put it in a box. Everybody, some, somebody can follow your writing. Is that correct or not? Otherwise, when you want to go back there, you would not see what happens. So sigma mc equal to zero. This one doesn't, doesn't have any moment. You have 40 times, uh, 40 times 16. This was eight inches, at eight inches. So 40 times 16 inches, the moment of 40, about point C. This one doesn't have any moment. The horizontal component doesn't have any moment, only there. Well, as you see, it's very simple. I don't have to do it, but I do it anyhow. Three fifth of the E, that's the vertical component, multiplied by distance, force times distance, A, and that one is also is positive. The other one was negative, negative equal to zero. So E ends up to be equal to, uh, simply E ends up to be equal to 133.3, 133.3, or you can leave it at 133. So this one is solved. As soon as E become equal to, this force E become equal to, this was point E, 133.3. Notice immediately you can calculate Cx and Cy. Put it here, calculate. Of course, actually, what you do it is finished. It is so simple. You will be surprised. Your friend, it takes twice as much or three times as much to draw the free body diagram of each member, but immediately, by doing a couple of small moments here and there, sometimes you have to take the moment about this member, sometimes the other member, depends how many forces you have. It's very simple operation. It falls apart. Is that correct or not? Yes? Yes. Next one. Okay. There are few here. Just what is important here, guys? Notice what is important here is not sigma mx. So MA equal to zero, sigma FX equal to zero, sigma F. I'm assuming everybody now knows that part. What is here involved? The free body diagram. Actually, this is the key for every problem from now on. For that reason, there are three problems down here, which I would like you to look at it at home. And if you have any question, ask me how to draw those free body diagram. Notice I did not purposely, I did not give you the dimension because I don't want you to solve it. Solving it, everybody by now should be doing because we have gone through chapter one, two, three, four, especially four. We had this bunch of homework. You have used it so many times, yes or no? However, let's do the problem number one together. The one on the left-hand corner, this one. The one on the, this left-hand corner that you want to draw the free body diagram. First of all, tell me what is this for? I think we discussed that once before. I don't know whether we did or not. What do you think this problem is? In engineering wise, what are we trying to do? That I'm asking you. <laughs> Assume that cross section, do you see a circle there? That's a pipe, could be a pipeline. Is that correct? Could be water pipe or could be oil pipe or under pressure or not, that's beside the point. What are we trying to do? We are holding it against the slope. So let's say that you are Alaskan oil line or pipe line and here is the hill and the pipe wants to go here. This is the pipe, is that correct? You are putting outside, not in the ground. And you want to support that. To support that, you put here a pin connection here, this is pin connection to the ground, and here is pin connection, and the slope goes, of course, like that, and then you have another rod connecting here to here. Is that correct or not? So holding this pipe, you know. So there is a weight involved here. Is that correct or not? Let's say that every, this is the ground. Of course, this is touches the ground as well, so it cannot be like that, so it's consistent. Is that correct or not? Yes? And therefore, this is, let's say every 50 foot you go on the pipeline, you put one of these support. Is that correct or not? Therefore, the weight of the 50 foot of 25 feet of pipe this way and the other way goes to each support. So you calculate W. Is that correct or not? Yes? Mm -hmm. So W is given 
and then you want to calculate the forces on each member later on to design this rod and that rod. Is that correct or not? Obviously, we have done that in the past. What should we do first? How do you come up with a free body diagram? First free body diagram of the cylinder, which is the free body diagram of particle. You can consider that because all the forces going through the center. So this is the free body diagram, correct free body diagram for this system. I have a cylinder with the weight of, we have seen that in the past, yes or no? W, correct? Yes? What else do we have here? Let's say it is a contact force here, ground contact forces, correct? Which we show it with? What? Normal force, normal, let's call it N1. Is that correct or not? Then there is a contact between the pipe and this rod. So therefore, there is another one. And we have seen this problem before, so call it N2. So if I give you W, can you find N1 and N2 using equilibrium of particle? Of course, you have sigma of x equal to 0 and sigma of y equal to 0. You get to that one. And then you come to the rod, rod on here somewhere, of course, if I give you all the distances, angle, etc. somewhere you have N2 now applied here perpendicular to that rod. Yes or no? Correct? And here, this is not a two-force member. So therefore, at point, what we did we call it there? So here, they call this one A, this one B, this one C. So now here is member A, B. So at A, I put here AX and let's put it here in unknown format. AX and AY. Now what should I put at B? That looks like a pin. Should I put BX, BY or only one force? Only one force. One force. Because BC is a two force member because the way it's been designed. Therefore, I put only one force in that direction, wherever that direction. Of course, these are will be given to you at the angle of 10 degrees, 20 degrees. So I put here one force in the direction of the member. So how many unknown do I have there? Three. So if I give you all the number, you should be able to do it. This is equilibrium of particle. This is equilibrium of rigid body. So all being combined there. Now, go to the next page. <laughs> OK, let's look at that, that picture there. OK. How do I draw that for the? For there for everybody to see. This we call it a machine. Is that correct or not? Yes or no? Correct? This one. What are we trying to achieve here? There is a handle there, there is lots of member there. This is frame is finished, guys. This is the frame. You may have pulley, you may not have pulley, etc. etc. I don't have time to do it this one. Let me do that one next week. However, just to finish all the frame, we are not going to have a quiz on Tuesday. Our quiz will be Thursday next week, which will be entire chapter trusses and frame. Let me give you one more frame just to ask your idea. At least you'll be able to do all your frame and all your trusses before Tuesday. And there are some machine part. Machine part is the same idea. The machine part break it into different member and do exactly what I do. It's really nothing else to add, but I'm going to do one or two example on Tuesday in order nothing be left out. Everybody understand, should everybody, be. but however, technically you should be able to do it. But let's look at one more frame because it has something in it of interest that I have to discuss with you, which is not in your handout. So please draw this frame. This one, I show you how to solve it. Everybody see what, these are important things. If you understood what I said there, the rest of it is just writing sigma fx and Sigma M and Sigma M, and everybody should be able to do it. I should not really spend time doing this detailed work anymore because, anymore because you already have done that. Here has a couple of other members that I want you to, I mean, civil, not similar to the other one, but something new that you have, have seen in the past, but in, not in this frame. So here I have a frame, a member, I'm sorry, pinned to the ground, let's call it point B. And then here is another member here, like this. And here is the fixed support. So this member is fixed to the ground, so let's call it A. This is point C. This is point D. The point D is attached to a cable, and this attached to a, 
little pulley which had low dimension, and here we have 50 pound force there. However, this one is like this. This one is on top, and a little cut here, and a pin here which is attached to the other one in the back. Everybody understand what I'm saying? But we had this slider there. Is that correct? Or not? Now, how many? If I want to calculate external, let's give me a couple of minutes, extra minutes, so we can, we can finish this and explain it at least to you. If this was a quiz, all the dimension is given. This height, this height, this height, this length, this length. Everybody understand that? Yes? Now, how many reactions do you have here? No, this is, a, this is not a roller, this is a pin, and this is not a two force member, remember that. So you have here Vx and Vy, that's the first one. Vx here and Vy. <coughs> How many unknown do you have here? Three, because it's a fixed support. Ax and Ay, Ay Ax, Ay and, and Ma, correct. Now, five unknown, obviously it is not? Solve it. But if I go to the frame, because there is a pin here, everybody understand that. Separate these two members from each other. I have a member like that, and I have a vertical member. Is that correct or not? Yes? Now, again, one more time. Here I put BX, BY. What should I put here? That's the only reason I'm doing that. This one, you already answered me correctly because this was a fixed supporter. This one, no, that, I'm just interested here. What should I put there? How many forces should I put there? I explained that to you in the previous chapter. It is there, it is in your table. You have a freedom going this way and no freedom going that way. So in one of them, doesn't matter, in one of them you put this the line will be given. If this slope is 4.3, you have to line, draw a line perpendicular to that, which is in this direction. So you put here a C going, if this is 4, 3 run, you put here 3, 4, because that's perpendicular to that. So the angle changes. And that is unknown, yes or no? However, on the other member, you put C equal and opposite. So if this is the C for the other one, you put exactly the same force C equal and opposite with the run of three and rise of the four. And here, of course, you put here 50. And here you put, what do we have? Here we have AX, let, sorry, I have to rush it a little bit. AX, AY, and MA. Is that correct or not? However, this point is left. What should I put at that point? That's point B, C, A, let's call it point E. What should I put at point E? I already explained to you. A force going down and a force going that way because there is no. So there is 50 going here, 50 going there. Is that correct or not? Yes? Look at how many unknown do you have here? See, that's the key bottom line. After you draw this, which problem to me is finished, yes? Why is that 50 going this? On Which 50? Oh, never mind, never mind. Oh, yeah, okay. That's, that, that's the other end of cable, of course, yes. You have, when you cut it here and you cut it here, these two are going opposite side, of course. Is that, everybody understand that, yes? Now, look at it, guys. Can you solve this? Yes. Take a moment about here. You can, actually, you don't have to break this in compound. <coughs> this is perpendicular. If you have this line, the moment of that C times this distance, that's your moment. Is that correct or not? And the moment of these two, which is given, you find the C, Immediately BX, DY, you put the C here, you find AX. Actually, that part of it is very simple. What is the key, guys? Free body diagram. Please, do your free body diagram correctly. That means that you do free body diagram correctly. If I give you a quiz, you can, sorry. If I give you a quiz, I know that you know how to solve it. Everybody understand. But if your free body diagram is wrong, like your previous quiz, <laughs> then you are in trouble. <laughs> No, the whole...